Just imagine, 30 years ago, there was no road into Santubo. If people wanted to come out here from Kuching, they had to come by boat. But the journey was certainly worth it. I mean, look at the view, it's breathtaking. Now we are able to enjoy all of this in comfort thanks to the development of Damai by SCDC. Now in the last edition, SCDC kick-started the tourism industry in the centre of Kuching. The next was Santubo, which has the Sarawak Cultural Village, very well famous and also known as SCV. The home of the iconic Rainforest World Music Festival. You know, tourism is something which is uh, sort of uh, very open and also dynamic. It's very dynamic. A visitor cannot visit one place throughout his life unless there's special thing there. But if you go to a place A, next year you want to go to place B. Maybe year after that place C, that's normal. But if there is certain thing in that particular place that attracts you, that surely you feel like staying every year, then uh, it depends very much on how you treat this visitor. That's, that's why I said it depends on stakeholders. But for infrastructure, SEDC uh, can provide the infrastructure backed by the government. And the rest is uh, depending on uh, how you treat the visitor, I think uh, that's basic tourism. As I said, it's very dynamic and something intangible. When we talk about Damai, of course, it's uh, <laughs> centered around our facilities in the Damai Peninsula, which are actually the two hotels and the cultural village, and of course, the Damai Golf Course. Now, because of this unique location of Damai, as a peninsula, I think the state has actually entrusted SCDC to develop the peninsula. Damai Peninsula, when I was still in primary school, secondary school, that area is, is a forested area where those who, who goes to that place are only during school holidays. I used to go using those express boat, you no know, wooden express boat, to set up camps in what we call Tolok Bandung, which is exactly where Damai is now. But leaders at that time, in the 70s, in the 80s, they are able to see the potential of that place. They come up with that idea and. SCDC was the one that first built up the Damai Resort. I think Damai Beach Resort, uh, and eventually I think the other one is Damai Lagoon Resort, and Cultural Village, I think all this uh, ties in very well with uh, developing the whole Sanduban Peninsula as a tourist destination. So to Sandubon is just about 35 kilometers away from Kuching. So it's a very short uh, trip for tourists uh, to visit. So with accommodation, with the cultural village, uh, and also hopefully uh, the Sandubon National Park is there, where people can trek all the way up to the summit. So that setting of uh, Damai uh, or Santubon Peninsula helps a lot in terms of attracting a lot of visitors to come to Sarawak and even a lot of returning tourists. SCDC has got a play as a part to play in developing a downtrodden place. Kalau kita lihat tempat itu, if we are to look at it, that place 
nobody will want to go to that place until it is being developed. We know that we didn't have a resort at the time, so this was going to be our first resort, seaside resort. And of course, Santubong is perfect. The setting is beautiful and with the island. And, and so it was a perfect setting for us. And when we did the study on uh, finding the location, well, Santubong stands out. So that's why the reason for going to Santubong Plus is just about 45 minutes away from the city. So it's, it's far enough, but, and, and far, but near, near enough as well. When development like this uh, comes about, it brings up that area into a very strategic, important place. That's why now some more new developments are being proposed. I've not gone very deep into detail, but then I do know that SADC is coming up with a few more developments within that area, which will, inshallah, uh, in the near future, bring up uh, that Damai Peninsula into a... another important uh, tourism project. It is already a, a, an important tourism project. So this articulated in several projects in terms of econ economy. We were looking at tourism, so we were in the hotel industry and then, uh, you know, Holiday Inn was, was built during our time. And of course, the building of Damai was something we are proud of because we wanted uh, that to be the destination for Sarawak. And we, with Damai came the Sarawak Culture Village and many things we did. Was, and uh, I, was, I was so pleased you were able to do that because it gave Sarawakian a resort at their doorstep, which is very popular. They love it. And at the same time, we, when, when doing that project, we were able to uh, build infrastructure, road to to Damai, all that uh, made a lot of difference to people's lives. And then we were training the people, the locals on, on hotel management, so it was very nice. I, 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 I felt that was a very successful project. This place has been transformed even more since this first hotel. In fact, there are several more hotels in this area. And there are different styles too, from jungle retreats to clifftop resorts. So whatever type of holiday you enjoy, Santubong can certainly supply it. There is nature, culture, adventure and even archaeology. So, some of the oldest sites can be found right here in Santubong and even the new concepts too. In 1990, SEDC started development on a whole new tourism concept for Sarawak. It's a showcase of Sarawak's many unique cultures. Because you cannot taste tourism, like you taste the food. Food, at least you know whether it's sweet or not. But tourism, you can't. It depends very much on how you behave and how you treat them. And uh, I think uh, Sarawak is fortunate. We are very hospitable people. And we are having uh, the culture, the ethnic cultures that you can affect people. But the government provide the, the, the what they call the infrastructure, either SCDC or the government directly. We will also be improving our cultural village. And cultural village will improve. Cultural village is already an attraction by itself. I mean, it's a world famous. And of course, as, as you mentioned, the, we have this uh, old forest festival, a music festival that is uh, being run on a yearly basis. 
So there will be other attractions that will be maybe we will try to run even on a monthly basis to get more tourists to come. When you talk about cultural village by SEDC, that is the venue of our iconic Rainforest World Musical Festival. And last, in 2019, before the pandemic, it attracted 23,500 people uh, all over the world for just three nights. So that is how I think uh, the settings or the infra facilities put in by SEDC has helped Sarawak's tourism to a very big extent. I was involved, in fact, uh, in the development of Cultural Village. Yeah, we started the Cultural Village uh, project management team uh, to under the uh, management at the time. We were focusing on developing new attractions for Sarawak to uh, attract more visitors to the state. That's how we were given several areas to develop, particularly in Damai. Uh, Damai became our new tourism destination. I think Rainforest started with a very humble beginning uh, with just 300 uh, participants. But I think as we go along, this year is a silver jubilee of uh, Rainforest. That means it's going into the 25th year. So I think the crowd uh, gets increased as it makes a name uh, in, in the whole, whole world, I would say, because uh, it was recognized as one of the top 10 uh, musical festivals in the world uh, at this moment. The uh, Sarawak Cultural Village is like that. It's a gem in the crown. It is multifaceted. Uh, we, we feature all the ethnic groups in Sarawak, where we feature the um, ethnic groups live in peace and harmony. They respect each other's culture. They respect each other's beliefs and tradition and customs. Why we choose a cultural village? Because cultural village is such a nice cultural setting. Not only that, with a lot of indigenous tribes uh, dwelling houses, but the more important, I think, is the, the backdrop. You know, it's a rainforest. You know, it's a green uh, backdrop with mountains and, and, and forests. So you can see the main stage. Actually, the backdrop is the forest, green, you know, environmental. Yeah, so actually that attracts a lot of people. That's why our iconic name is uh, Rainforest World Musical Festival. So I think that term and that setting uh, attracted a lot of music lovers to come. through what we call the Damai uh, Peninsula Master Plan. And this master plan will include a few facilities. One is a marina, a world-class marina. And then uh, we have uh, the development of resorts, uh, eco-resorts, to complement what we have now. Our Damai Beach and uh, Damai Lagoon Resort, which are under renovation. The Damai Lagoon is actually under total renovation, uh, so that we will be able to actually uh, sell it as a five-star hotel or five-star resort when it's completed by the end of this year.
there was already that plan to have this master plan for Damai Peninsula, right? The, the master plan for Damai Peninsula was then uh, being being uh, being formulated uh, through the appointment of the master planner, and uh, the one that is actually doing the job now ha has a very strong uh, connection with the whole development of Kuching as a whole, and uh, the group has uh, more or less finalised the master plan. The Damai Peninsula will feature uh, other attractions, including the cable car. We have tracks and trails uh, throughout the peninsula to, uh, that are being planned. Especially for people who, who love to do trails, and uh, do backpacking uh, in, the, in the jungle, in the mountains. And of course, uh, we will make available places where people can do bird watching and things like that. I mean, so there will be a lot of activities that will be, that are being planned. The hotel itself will, of course, uh, we are looking at these new facilities for for a new type of tourists, the health tourism. We will be having wellness centers in our hotels, which will attract uh, tourists to come not only to see the place but also to get well or to to maintain their health <laughs> and to be healthy. organization is pursuing uh, Damai as a new uh, resort city, uh, Damai master plan being worked out now. So with all the attractions there, like the Kacho village, the golf course and the resorts that we have there. So I think we have managed to transform the Damai Peninsula into an iconic area with Kacho village evolving itself into an international and world-class uh, attraction. We will also develop uh, other type of uh, opportunities for people to be, especially those on the lower scale, by having, uh, by developing glamping and, uh, and chalets uh, around the peninsula. So that uh, these facilities are available not only for uh, rich, the rich, the super rich, <laughs> or those people who have yachts, but also for the people who are who are who can who cannot afford uh, to go into luxury hotels. So, camping and uh, glamping and things like that will also be made available. We will also develop houses, residential areas, maybe even townhouses uh, in the Damai Golf Course is part of our Damai Golf Course expansion and to enable people to own properties which has a view of the golf course as well as the view of the South China Sea. <laughs> We need to actually develop uh, a lot of products in order to attract investors and people to come. And I think we have to make Damai a very attractive destination for these people. And of course, with all these things that we are planning, we do hope that we will be able to uh, encourage or to get more tourist arrivals and increase uh, the receipts from the tourism. And that will have its spillover effect on the people. There will be a lot of people who will be able to be employed in the tourism sector. We have uh, people living nearby, you know, Kampung Sentubong, Kampung Buntal and uh, nearby areas. That will 
be able to actually be given the opportunities to to for jobs in this uh, in the tourism business and at the same time also in to become entrepreneurs <laughs> they can sell their things <laughs> and their products you know yeah so so there will be a lot of spillover effects and a lot of uh, benefits to people people in the area and as a whole of course uh, to increase tourism in the state of Sarawak now this is the perfect weekend getaway so close to Kuching but ever so different no wonder this is a favorite spot with locals and tourists the sea sunset Santubong mountain I could stay here forever. But sadly, we can't. We need to get back to Kuching, where there's a lot more development to be seen. SEDC never stops, so neither can we. That's right. Now, join us in the next show as we return to the capital city where SEDC redefined the city centre. See you then. Going around there, I took pictures at the waterfront. You know, we went for a walk uh, at the waterfront. There's a new place that we, I think, uh, we all, uh, with my officers, we just, we just took pictures just to show those people this is the ID spot. <laughs>